Really, guys? Thousands of you poured into my site to cast your vote, and of the five candidates laid out for you, you all used your voice to pick the absolute worst of the five. Oh, I don't mean the worst as in quality. I mean the worst as in for me to review. You guys passed up Apocalypse Zero, literally the most insane anime I've ever seen in my life. Seriously, the first time I tried to watch it, I woke up ten days later in a petting zoo in Croatia. But no, you guys didn't want to see me lose my mind watching a fat hag rip a guy's face off and use it as a nipple pasty. What's wrong with you people? No, you wanted me to sit down and talk smack about the single most boring and dumb anime we've ever had on this show. If it means there's an outside chance, I'll get to make a few Terry Bogard jokes. I should have known better. If the internet has ever taught me one thing, it's that Terry Bogard always finds a way. Following the example set by the Fatal Fury animes, The Art of Fighting is an adaptation of a fighting game. Except this time it's about a fighting game that nobody cared about. It wasn't Fatal Fury, it wasn't Street Fighter, hell, it wasn't even Samurai Showdown. It's just another fighting game series that people only know about because it's tangential connection with the King of Fighters. It's the series that introduced King to the SNK continuity. And that's about it. Certainly nothing worth making an anime over, even at the time. And this lack of substance is readily felt all throughout the anime. It's only 40 minutes long, so at least it's merciful, but the plot is no less vapid and stretched saran wrap thin. It comes off more like a bad episode of Lupin the Third than a fighting game anime, really. Hell, at least a bad episode of Lupin has a slight chance you'll get to see Fujiko's sweater bunnies. Ain't no mammoth majumbos waiting for us in the art of fighting, though. So get ready to count ceiling tiles with me, because you little fucks have no one to blame but yourselves. We start off on a beautiful day in scenic Not New York, with our hero, Not Ryu, chasing after Not Lloyd, when he's interrupted by Not Ken Masters. And here I am, not giving a shit. And before any of you fucks try to say that Robert Garcia here isn't supposed to be Ken Masters, let's lay down some facts. He's the rich, yuppie sparring partner and rival slash friend to Ryo Sakazaki. Sound fucking familiar? Shut up, Garcia. I'm getting paid a lot of money to take care of this little feline princess. I have to keep her away from people like you. I guess you'll do just about anything for money. What's wrong, Rio? Not too busy with the karate dojo? <laughs> dojo! <laughs> <laughs> Someone shoot me! Sweet Moses in heaven, how did anyone think that this was a passable dub? You could drive flatbeds through the pauses in these lines. I swear to you, I did nothing to the original footage. Oh, of course not. But there's really nothing wrong. With your best friend being your sister's boyfriend, is there? Plus, I'm a good-looking guy, and if me and Yuri make it to the altar, and the entire Garcia Foundation becomes ours, then we might be able to buy you a pair of shoes. Judging by his delivery, I don't think Not Ken here is fit to drive, because he's either drunk or legally retarded. Not wearing shoes is part of our training. So foot ulcers and tetanus makes you real good at martial arts, huh? This isn't a dojo, put some goddamn shoes on. But you know, I do like that sister of yours. It's like not Ken here forgot Yuri's name, so he paused for a moment to try to think of it, but all he could come up with is that sister of yours. Thankfully, this riveting dialogue is interrupted by a completely ridiculous scene. Well, it's obvious why this scene doesn't make any sense. Not Ken here landed in the wrong place. From this angle, Not Ken jumped to his left and should have landed to the left of his car, but he lands on top of it. In order for that to happen, Not Ryu would have had to push off of Not Ken in the opposite direction his momentum was carrying him, which would have meant that Not Ryu would have jumped back up to where he came from, but he lands to the right side of the car. 
In order for that to happen, he would have had to propel not Ken in the direction he was already traveling. And that's why this scene makes no sense. Along with everything else! Apparently, not Ryu is going after this lost cat for the reward money, and not Ken decides to help out. Free! Yeah. Oh, great! Whoa! Oh. Hey, 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 there's a hot chick in there changing clothes. Boom! Just kidding. You fucking tease. Who the hell was not Ken trying to fake out if not the audience? Not Ryu was looking right in the window as he was saying that. In any case, the two doofuses bungle around the apartment looking for the cat when the tenant runs in, who is being chased by a bunch of thugs. And check out the balls on Egon here. He's cornered by four thugs, armed with knives and guns, and he attacks them with chairs and tables like he's Jackie Chan. Aha! Your guns are useless against this... Uh, this thing I got from Ikea. Uh, I think it's... Huh! Was not expecting that. Not Thunderhawk here chastises one of his lackeys for killing Egon. They wanted him alive because he's hidden a precious diamond that they stole, and they don't know where he's hidden it. And you see where this is going. The gang thinks these two chuckleheads know where Egon hid the diamond, and voila! Instant plot. In fact, I bet all of you know exactly how this plot is going to play out to the letter. The gang kidnaps Ryu's sister, they have a big old battle in the gang leader's mansion, and then everything is solved. The end. I just summarized the entire OVA in one sentence. Fuck, no wonder every single anime based off a fighting game just centers around a tournament. Anytime they deviate from it, they just wind up a Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah, Fatal Fury the Motion Picture deviated from that too, but it at least had the good sense to be entertaining in its inanity. And at least it had Terry Bogard in it. But why would we want an anime based off a fun character like Terry, when we can have an anime based on such memorable characters as Ryo Sakazaki and Robert Garcia? I mean, even at the time, was anyone clamoring for an anime about these guys? Anyone at all. Put a big black permanent X on your forehead if you wanted this. That way, we have a target. Shit, how am I doing on time? I'm just hitting the commercial break. Hey! Hey! Uh... Hi! Uh... Moving on! The two dinguses make their escape, making not Thunderhawk the bearer of bad news to his boss. Then it's safe to assume that the two kids in the room took it with them. One is Robert Garcia, heir to the Garcia Foundation. Wow, the 90s version of Facebook was very comprehensive. See? Not only does it include his weight and height, but also his personality. He is quite stylish, or stylus-y as it were. And apparently he doesn't belong to the Garcia family, but the Garcia Foundation family. And as bad as Not Ken's convenient profile is, it's nowhere near as bad as Not Ryu's. And you know what that means. It's time for another edition of SPOT! The English! You know the rules. You'll have 10 seconds to spot the English without pausing the video. Now, the last time we played this game, I threw you a baffling changeup. So this time around, I'm going to play it easy on you and throw you a fat slider right over the plate. Ready? Go! Time's up! Did you spot the English? Point your finger to where you believe the English is. If your finger is pointing here... Wrong! Sorry, that's just a syntax error. 
If you're pointing your finger here... No! Once again, sorry, but that's just a misspelling. But if you're pointing your finger here, then you're correct! Since the Japanese do not romanize their language using the letter C, K's and C's are often mixed up. Hence why not Ryu's special ability is... Correct! If you got it right, then pat yourself right on the back. And if you got it wrong, then better luck next time on Spot the English! While Not Thunderhawk finds out about Not Ryu's dojo and makes tracks, King here conveniently finds Not Ryu's sister's profile, and that she is simple and innocent. So simple and innocent, in fact, that King abducts her for insurance. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. So, her profile also includes where she goes to school and what her schedule's like. Where the fuck is this information coming from? King seems to be having an easier time with her target than not Thunderhawk, who gets the shit kicked out of him by these two numbnuts here. told I can't get too mad at the anime since it's just trying to adapt the barebones story of the first video game, including the weak-ass kidnapping plot, and it's painfully obvious here. As soon as Not Thunderhawk is knocked out, he never appears again for the rest of the show, and just because they have to fit more characters from the video game here, when the police arrive at Not Ryu's house, we learn that they're being led by... Ryu Haku Toto? Wait, he wasn't a cop, was he? Enough! Stop yanking my chain, wise guy! Jack and his men attacked you for no reason? Jack, eh? Oh, you mean bear killer Jack? Jack Tanner, uh, one of Mr. Big's men. Mr. Uh, Big? He's one of the players in the underground world of South Town. And he didn't sound like Cookie Monster if he got his balls caught in the garbage disposal, did he? So, the two blockheads find out that they're the target of Mr. Big. What were you gonna tell no, me? No, 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 Get that shit off my show at once. The day I make a Sex in the City reference is the day I scalp myself. You fucks are lucky that I don't have any Rocky and Bullwinkle clips. They got us confused with someone else. Robert and I didn't do anything. It is my belief that Mr. Big is the one who stole the serious stone, and the department has been investigating him for months. Huh? The two morons are let go after questioning, but they're not out of danger yet, as Mr. Big has a nasty surprise waiting for them at the dojo. That crazy son of a... Huh? Hey! There's no driver! This is Yuri's! I've got a kitten named Yuri. If you want her back, bring the Sirius to the casino. Mr. Big. So, Mr. Big leaves them a ransom note in a rampaging 18-wheeler that could have easily killed them. Asshole, if they're dead, they can't give you the diamond! Imagine if in Commando, Bennett tried to kill Matrix before he learns about what he had to do to get his daughter back. Bullshit! Exactly! Well, at the very least, the buck stops at Mr. Big here in the anime, unlike the game where Yuri and Not Ryu's father was coerced into cooperating with Mr. Big and Geese Howard to kill Jeff Bogard. Yeah, figure that one out. I like you. I like a strong woman. <laughs> oh, hi, Not Guile. Yeah, I know this guy's John Crowley, but you can't tell me with a straight face this guy was never a ripoff of Guile. All they did was make him evil, and they turned this guy up to 11 in the anime. Leave me alone. I enjoy watching her tremble and shake. <laughs> Since the two Stooges have no idea where the diamond is, they decide to try and fake out Mr. Big and his gang and try to pull a fast one. 
but it fails and they're right back where they started from. Well, that was a good 10 minutes wasted. Figuring that they should probably try and find the diamond, the two go back to Egon's apartment and they manage to rub two brain cells together and find it outside the apartment. With the diamond in hand, they rush off to Mr. Big's mansion to rescue Yuri. And apparently, the anime thinks this must take an entire minute to establish. know a bad anime is nearing its end when it decides to pull the drag shoot and stretch this shit out. If I wasn't of sound mind, I would swear this anime is self-aware and intentionally making itself longer just to piss me off. Don't think I'm not onto you. As the two lunkheads make their way into the mansion for the hostage exchange, poor old Toto and the rest of the police are bringing up the rear, and they look like they won't be able to do much good. <laughs> will be bothering us for quite some time. Hmm. How do you feel now? No way out, huh? Well, I kind of feel like a drink myself. No. Just hand over the Eye of Sirius. Better do what he says, guys! The guy has a giant magic marker! They hand over the diamond, but Mr. Big is a name that doesn't exude trustworthiness. And like chumps, they stand and gawk as Mr. Big tries to fly away with Yuri. Or do they? There will be an additional springboard installed for Melon's dive. The Triple Lindy. Yes, not Ryo shows off his physics-defying bullshit by launching himself at the helicopter and brings the whole chopper crashing down along with the diamond in the pool. But of course, when has that ever killed the bad guys? Hmm. Huh. I've been focusing so much on the dumb and boring plot points of this anime that I completely neglected to mention that the fight scenes are also complete ass. The one thing they absolutely had to get right, and they don't. Abject, complete, failure. Rounding third here, the two idiots manage to beat back both Mr. Big and King, and the day is saved. Ha! There's not a jail in the world that can hold me, Lieutenant. Uh. Yeah, and I'll bust you every time! He probably will be out in a heartbeat. He's got connections on every level of the judicial system, from the bottom on up to the Supreme Court. Oh, well, in that case... <laughs> problem solved. I'll admit that I'm surprised I was able to wring so much out of this fucking inane pile of tripe. Nothing is harder than trying to have fun with something as dull and stupid as the art of fighting. And after sitting through this, all I have to ask is, where the hell is my World Heroes anime? It deserves to exist as much as this shitball, I assure you. But what's done is done, and we can finally move on from here. Now, hopefully, my fans came through and chose Apocalypse Zero as the Art of Fighting's running mate. Right? Oh, God damn it! Shiri da sei, yasei no kazero yo ni yume wa mitsube.